Oh, it's so wonderful to see you again. Come in and unwind. Welcome back to the Celestial Cafe, a podcast for the magical mind. So come, take a seat. Would you like something sweet? A star drop potion for the soul? Maybe an enchanted eclair as a treat? I just baked a batch of warm cookies with a dash of moonlight. I wonder what will happen if you take a little bite. Here is your bewitching beverage. Let each sip melt your worries away. It's time to open your mind. I wonder what magic awaits us today. Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to the Celestial Cafe podcast, uh, a podcast for magical minds by magical minds. How is everyone doing today? Happy June 15th. Excellent. Hello, everyone. Hi. Good, good. I I'm actually, today's been a good day, which I, I needed. It's been warm outside. The rain is gone. We got some good rain. It was so dry. So my garden's thriving. I'm thriving. Aww. It's a good day. <laughs> Pantheras moisturized. I love it. Moisturized. <laughs> um, my life could be a whole lot better than it is right now, but, you know, mm -hmm. I'm getting through it. So, um, yeah. You got this fuchsia. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, we believe that's in That's about it. Um, but I'm trying to, you know, be positive about things. And yeah. I went for a bike ride today and I planted some new seeds today. I planted mushrooms oh, yesterday. Um, hey, so yeah. so it's been it's been a rough week. <laughs> um very rough, but Getting but it seems it. like you're so, making the most of it, which is good. Yeah, and you're you're bounce you're bouncing. That's all we yeah. can ask. Um, so for for those who didn't see the last episode, uh, my cat Avocado passed away last week. So yeah. it's been pretty rough, especially since he was my fami familiar. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the first time since I was twelve that I haven't had a familiar with me. Mm -hmm. um, so so that's been uh, it's been it's been a trying week, but. Yeah. But I'm here, and I'm glad to get back to like normal things, and um, yeah, and, and, and we're glad you're here too. Things. And yeah. uh, mm. and 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 thankfully, avocado is immortalized on the cats and witchcraft <laughs> episode forever. <laughs> so he sees and, and all my celestial stream. cafe hearts. Oh yes, all the time. I was I was going through like clips um last night and there are so many clips on my Aww. twitch channel of him <laughs> so, that's so sweet yeah, yeah. but i'm glad um, you're here we're all we're all mm -hmm. glad you're here today we you, you were missed fuchsia we did miss you mm -hmm. so it, we're midway through june the summertime is rolling over here in northern hemisphere i'm very excited this is my favorite time of the year um yes. i love being warm i love laying in the grass with the sunshine it's my favorite i love bug, little bugs little ladybugs um so it's a happy time it's almost honeysuckle season. I'm waiting. Um, so we're going to be chatting today about the summer at a glance, the season at a glance. This is a new episode style format that we're kind of test running today. Um, and we might tweak it and, you know, kind of try a little this, try a little that over time. But we're, we're going to test this out because we talked in the last couple episodes about how we're kind of... Um, adjusting the full moon episodes because we've already covered one entire year's worth of the full moons. So we don't want to continue giving you guys the same information, but we still feel like it's really valuable to talk about specifically the astrology as it evolves over time because these feel like little like energetic check-ins that we're doing. So uh, if you want to get more information about the Celestial Cafe podcast, you can check us out at celestialcafe.org. There's links to all of our social media, email, everything you could need, Patreon if you'd like to support. We love you all thank you so much for supporting us on Patreon, joining the book club. We're looking forward to that first book club meeting, which I believe is June 30th. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess that wraps it up for a little, a little intro, but um, yeah, we're going to be digging deep into everything that's coming up over the next couple of months. Summer is officially starting on is it June 21st or is it July 21st? June, June 21st, 21st is, is summer our summer solstice. solstice. So next week, which is so yeah. exciting. It, it's funny because we finally have spring here. Um, we had summer like two weeks ago where it was like in the 90s. And now we finally have like the perfect spring weather. It's been like 60s, 70s, breezy. It's been mm -hmm. beautiful. Chicago never gets spring. So I'll overlook the fact that we're getting spring in June because we actually get spring this year um but but <laughs> it's gonna just jump right into sh summer i know right yeah <laughs> so. 
I mean, it's it's already so beautiful here. I I'm I like summer. I, I I like all the seasons really. My favorites, I think, is early autumn, which is a little bit of summer spice. I like that. Oh, the 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 trees turning colors. But you know, I there's something so magical. It's about summer too, where I don't know the air feels fresher, and all the wildlife is especially noisy, and uh, the bullfrogs and all the the crickets are out. It, 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 especially at night, it's just so alive during the summer. So. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to pontificate about the magic of summer today. As we previously <laughs> mentioned, this is a new format, uh, and I'm going to be covering, as usual, the astrology portion. Um, we're going to kind of be weaving in and out between the hosts with just different information and vibe checks as we kind of go through a lot of these really interesting astrological checkpoints that we're going to be meeting this summer. And I figured, what better place to start than the first day of summer, which is also the first day of cancer season, uh, which is June 21st. I do want to say that a few days before, on June 18th is the beginning of a new lunation. It's a new moon in Gemini. So, okay, it's this episode's coming out on Monday. It'll be the day before. Uh, it'll be the, the, the Sunday before that the new moon starts. So when you hear this episode, it's going to be a part of new lunation. We're going to be rolling right into summer so shortly after this episode releases. And, and hopefully this can be a great guide to help you sort of, I don't know, check in with yourself and... and Behold the celestial magic of what summer's all about. But June 21st, sun enters Cancer nice and early in the morning for EST, like 11 a.m. Uh, and I, I want to say before we talk about this, this is a great night to see Venus and Mars for East Coasters. Um, it's going to be so clear. They're going to be hanging out right next to the moon. They're buddies. Those three, Mars, Venus, and the moon, they're going to be buddies during uh, uh, the, the the Cancer season. So, uh, but before I get any further, I think it's important for us to talk about the holiday, the Sabbath, which is... The summer solstice Lipa. or yes. Lipa. wonderful holiday. Yes, I would Which, like to hear about it up there. The exact summer solstice is actually for at least Eastern time is 1057 a.m. So the same moment, essentially, that it goes into the sun goes into cancer, yep. which is pretty exciting. So we've got our longest day of the year, Litha. We talked a lot about this on our last episode. So if you want like the full shipping, go check out the spiel that Fuchsia gave us um, in our last full moon episode, the full moon in Sagittarius. Uh, but just as a quick little recap, Litha, also known as midsummer summer solstice occurs um between june 18th and the 22nd usually on the northern hemisphere this year is on the 21st and the sun is reaching its zenith in the sky basically giving us our longest day of the year um this since it's one of our solstices is included on the wheel of the year if you celebrate that and has a lot of traditions involving uh, making sun tea working with solar energies fire and you know celebrating the the warmth that's here during that time yeah so yeah no that's awesome and and i litha is such a good spell casting day like i um even before like right as i was like a baby witch for lack of a better term like this was some of the first magic i did was with the summer solstice with sun tea i loved making sun tea and i infused it with all the all the good vibes definitely recommend some sun tea magic on on yeah. litha i also do love tarot readings on litha i don't know the the sun's at its brightest you get the most clarity you could see for miles on litha that's my mindset yeah, it's a it's a good day for any spells that needs to be given a little bit of extra power or to be f anything in your life that needs to be fired up, given some passion into it. Um, passion. It's a really good day. I definitely need to do some spell work <laughs> at the solstice. I yeah. definitely need to. So yeah, um, I think that would I, benefit you. Yeah, I, sh I should start making lists right now <laughs> so I make sure <laughs> I have everything ready to go. Yeah, by the time this episode comes out on Monday, it's going to be uh, the mm -hmm. solstice on Wednesday. So mm -hmm. you got a few days to prepare, uh, really soak in that beautiful solar energy, I believe, within the next few episodes in July, we're, we're planning a solar magic episode so we'll have some information by then if we still choose to do the episode i don't know it's a bunch of air signs here we will we, we've got a lot of topics we want to cover <laughs> yeah. a bunch of air signs and me who's like look at the schedule <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what do you mean? It's a suggestion. Okay. The schedule's a suggestion. Uh, but so, yes, yeah, suck in all that good energy on, on summer solstice. Um, and I also took a second. I kind of just really looked at the, the chart for what summer the the first day of summer because like i don't know i i i could be wrong on this i'm, I'm still a baby astrologer right but like i i think that you know the first day if of you're something, a baby astrologer the... what are we <laughs> you're in the womb uh <laughs> you're, you're, you're subconsciously still <laughs> bringing in all We're the information a cluster of astrologer cells okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I i just think like i don't know like that's like the birthday of summer so, like, I was like, I'm going to look at Summer's natal chart, question mark. Uh, so I, I, I took some extra time and really looked at it. And like I said earlier, there's this really fascinating conjunction that's happening between the moon and Venus and Mars that I think is going to stay kind of relevant throughout the whole summer. Just like, I don't know. That's what I was drawn to. Uh, and it just feels like it's it's Venus in the middle of uh, uh, the moon. And then, like, one arm for the moon, one arm for Mars. Also, it's in Leo, by the way. Uh, worth mentioning. So this this very strong Leonian energy. And you're going to find out w- Venus goes on a whole adventure this summer <laughs> by herself. She she has quite the journey. Uh, Mars uh, has a few special moments as well. But I feel like those those three planets working in conjunction uh, throughout the summer feels like 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 this this opposites attracting almost especially where like venus is trying to bring the moon and bring mars together and it can be this explosion of energy you know like if you can envision that i had read a lot about venus um about venus's movements this summer and um and how it's going to be um pretty interesting and really impactful for certain uh, certain people in certain signs and Definitely. I'm like please I, I need that I need that <laughs> bring it to me <laughs> yeah I, uh, fixed signs are going to be on quite the journey this summer honestly mm-hmm. like uh, they, they have been they've been on Mr. Bones Wild li- Ride for a little too long right now so I, I, I kneel to the respect to the fixed signs uh, but coming up next so June 21st solstice very cool I think that the next big thing that the big movement shaking movement is on June 26th Mercury's going to enter cancer gonna hang out there for a while i don't know uh i I looked at the chart it looks like that's a great day to really lean into that mercurial softness that blends with cancer affirmations what a great day for affirmation and 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 self-soothing words uh because the mercury is gonna end up being conjunct the sun trying the south node i don't know that feels like a day of holding of being really nice and kind to yourself right uh and then after that on june 30th Neptune goes retrograde in Pisces. And this is going to be the beginning of a lot of planets going retrograde this summer. Um, I don't know. When I think about Neptune retrograde, and and as we know, like Neptune rules Pisces. Uh, so then it's going retrograde in its own comfy sign. And it feels like to me, it's like, it wants to stay in Pisces longer. <laughs> it, it doesn't want to keep going. It wants to go back and, and really feel the Pisces movement, right? And I think that this is going to be the beginning of a... It's very heady, right? Because we think about, like, the Pisces mindset and Pisces... Uh, yeah, Pisces know, like, rules over, like, dreams and, like, illusions and confusion and, like, intuition and all of those things, right? Yeah, so it's very, yeah. like, third eye. It's very like yeah. uh, it reminds me a lot of like the Moon Tarot card a little bit. Um, oh yeah, here. definitely. Yeah, I think I said absolutely. this um, like in our Pisces episode, but I love Pisces energy, and I wish I had <laughs> Pisces placements <laughs> in my chart. I have none, but I love Pisces energy, so I'm I'm ready to bring some of that in, even That's though okay. I have none in my chart. We we, we <laughs> got some Pisces energy from me and Ty at least. I always forget mm-hmm. Panthera. What's your Pisces? representation you got any oh i gotta double check that one give me call me back in 30 seconds put you on the spot (laughs) i'll talk a little bit more about neptune retrograde in pisces it's just listen like if 
I, I'm going to spoil something about this summer, okay? This summer is going to be all about goal setting, goal reaching, and taking it very, very seriously. And to have Neptune go retrograde in, in Pisces is a little bit of bad timing because I feel like that kind of ungrounds us a little bit. We end up, we could dream big, but I feel like Neptune already has so much. Oops, sorry. I, I just apologize to my mic. Uh, <laughs> like, I, I feel like uh, Neptune's already lost in the sauce in Pisces, and then it's, it's going back for more and it's like hold up <laughs> like i i i just want to ground and i want to stay focused and uh, uh, be, uh get, get my shit done i don't know so it just feels like bad timing usually i'm all about the pisces fun i'm usually all about losing myself a little bit but i don't know i i've looked ahead and i just see a whole load of of Get your shit done. Focus and and all that in the summer. Sorry, spoilers. But yes, Panther, did you discover your Pisces? I did find it. So Saturn okay. and eleventh house. That's all my Pisces. So right, just because just a okay, we're yeah, both that's doing right. our Saturn return. So yes, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, it's Saturn so. and Pisces buddies. <laughs> oh yay! <laughs> we it really does feel like kindred spirits to those of us who are sharing solar return or Saturn returns together. Especially, oh man, solar returns are especially very cool to share <laughs> but that's really it for june um enjoy the sun uh stay focused stay grounded uh be kind to yourself you know classic classic uh, celestial cafe affirmations right but then we start always to get into be the kind to yourself always or else uh that that helps too um or the else <laughs> yeah the, the threatening positivity i, I think works <laughs> at least right now uh but then we start to get into the thick of some really special and interesting astrology in july uh we start with a full moon in capricorn on july 3rd which of course we'll be talking about at length in our new uh full moon episodes that are going to be coming up we're just going to be doing mostly a vibe check but from what i could tell astrologically um it's quite serious, you know? I mean, Capricorn's already a player in the game, which already denotes some sort of Saturnian influence, right? But, you know, it, it, it's, it feels especially discerning and grounding and, and focused. And I noticed that the moon is like trying Jupiter and Taurus. So we got some of that hard work equals prosperity magic that might be happening here, right? Uh, but I, I, it, you know, this mood was really asking you, do you want this? How do you have it? Guts. That's what it's asking you. Uh, Are you telling and, me that I have to put in hard work to get prosperity? You, you are going to be flabbergasted at the rest of the summer uh, just from that question alone. <laughs> no, as the Capricorn, yes. <laughs> I, I, on, I only know hard work or no work. I was going to say, That's work it. is your life. <laughs> I'm um, not working this summer, so. Um, true. Ooh. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. working. I'm working on content creation, so we'll see how fair. far that how far the summer gets me. Fair, fair. <laughs> um, so then we get a little bit of a break, and then around July 10th, we actually have two uh, transit shifts that happen on the 10th. Uh, the first one is that Mars is entering Virgo, and Mercury enters Leo, and these are, and you know, just thinking about those two planets kind of shifting uh, on the same day. I don't know. We think about Mars, this this warrior planet entering very studious and very focused. Oh, God, I'm going to say focused a whole bunch. I can just tell this is this feels like such a like like tunnel visioned like moment in astrology. Right. Like um, but it it's like almost like Mars is back to the books for a second to like get out there and fight even harder um, a little bit later, right? So, like, Mars enters Virgo, and it feels like just, like, this is very much put your head down in March forward energy, right? And, and I mean, it's conjunct Venus. It's trine the moon, uh, and that trine with the moon really makes it, like, a very emotionally driven Mars energy, right? Like, uh, uh, this this feels like studying until your brain hurts, you know, like that type of. Uh, uh, but like you're focused, right? And you're you're tuned in, and you're like, I I want to pass this test, 
So I'm going to put blood, sweat and tears into my studies to pass this test. Right. There's definitely like an intensity in this July. And it's so interesting too how like the astrology and then like the traditional side of things always like seems Mm -hmm. to mesh so well because um, you already briefly talked about the full moon. But so in uh, July, we have the thunder moon or the buck moon, depending on which area you're kind of from. Those tend to be the most two most popular names. Um, But it's all about like... I just think of like the heaviness of a storm right before it breaks and mm-hmm. like the the ground is like, you know, hungry for these these waters and this cleansing, but also this power. Like it, it's a it's such a um potent time of yeah. uh of cleansing and purification and you know, it's great for divination and water magic and things like that too. So it's just it's always yeah. so interesting to me how I everything know meshes together i know (laughs) it's magical perhaps uh but like the (laughs) but i wanted to say um hunger you mentioned hunger that's such a great way to look at this i think agitation that comes with some of these planet planetary shifts i think it's going to make us feel very hungry for more and hungry for for i'm gonna use a big word here justice whether that whatever that means internally externally just like getting your your worth out of the 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 energy and the power you put into things and even with mercury and leo i mean that is change your mind change your life you know what i mean like it's just like it's speaking with integrity, with authority, showing up and letting your words and that your 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 cognitive presence create a state of calm to those who like receive you, you know? And and to me, just like those two planets alone, July 10th, awesome checkpoint day. This is a great day, right in your calendar. This is an astrological checkpoint. And how bad do you want it? How can you alter and kindly shift your thoughts to be more in control, more powerful, more uh, uh, like well equipped for what's coming up ahead. Like I, I'm really resonating with like this warrior symbolism where it's like you you, you got to go back to the, the, the training zone. You got to go back to tutorial island for a little bit, relearn the basics so that when you go back out there, you're just you know what you're doing, like on every level, you know, even Wait, the basics. Hold on. Life yeah. has a tutorial island. <laughs> yeah, that's a. Uh, I, I missed it. That's preschool. Uh, <laughs> I didn't to go, go to preschool. My cousin would chase us with a plunger at my grandma's house. <laughs> can, we, can we have like, can we have preschool for adults who have finished school? It's God, called therapy. I, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> that's not free. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> we, we're struggling here, but like it, it's yeah, like reclaiming your power, shifting your awareness. God, July tenth is lit. Uh, for better or for worse, and once again, this is like we're. We're just leading. It feels like a lot of like bottlenecking of energy at this point, right? But then even more fun happens on July 17th. Uh, just a week later, we experience um, the nodal shift. Uh, so we talk about the North Node and the South Node. Well, first of all, fun fact, they're always going retrograde. Um, so they are always going backwards of the sign, depending upon what style of astrology you use. But most people will agree that they, they are going retrograde. And uh, so they are... On July 17th, it shifts into Aries North Node and Libra South Node axis. Um, So to recap, the North Node is sort of our big soul uh, goal journey, karmic, uh, like, like, I did it thing where we we want to conquer that in this lifetime, right? Uh, Subconsciously, super consciously or otherwise. And our South Node is sort of, we conquered this in our last life. So like, I'm really comfortable here and uh, it it might be a little harder for me to like 
reach my north node because I'm so comfy in like south node situations, right? And when a nodal shift happens transitly, I, I do think that there's a little bit of a rumbling just in, once again, that, that subconscious mindset where maybe people who have already been on the edge of like Aries north node mindsets might just fully delve into them. And to me, stepping into an Aries north node, Libra south node situation is moving more into just like this overall independence right and and being in service towards yourself so you can help others right sort of rewriting the script uh that a lot of people are given which is just help 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 others help others and then you feel good inside uh when of course we all know that's an illusion and fake we have to feel good first <laughs> and, uh, uh in order to fully be present and and help others and and just overall i think a lot of us are going to be tackling relationships with supporting yourself and others like very six of pentacles sort of am i going to be the one uh in in vulnerable in need begging for for anything, anything that I require, emotional assistance, money, whatever, or am I going to be the one who has everything in balance and can very freely give? Sort of figuring out those big questions, right? North node, south node, big, big placement. So like, once again, it might be a little more subtle, but worth mentioning. And also on the same day is a new lunation, new moon in Cancer, very low energy, emotional <laughs> new moon uh cancer notwithstanding yes exactly holding ourselves right uh so this might be a bit of a sensitive day i don't know um but you know even though you might be feeling tired overwhelmed this is still a great new moon to plant some seeds get focused it always is but uh like even even if they're small seeds, because I think that this is going to be a new moon that a lot of people are going to miss without noticing just because they're going to be so tired by the time they hit it. But do your best to participate a little in this new moon. Uh, there's there's it some feels like a it. rest and recovery like new moon. Like um, sometimes I feel like the new moons are very much like plan and like setting up for. And this one feels like, a, OK, like. You know what? Do, what do you need in this moment right now? Kind of a thing, yeah, like I uh, love that. giving yourself a little more attention rather than other things for a moment. I love that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and then only a few days later, Cancer season comes to an end, and we enter Leo season on and July twenty second. Crying. Maybe, maybe we cry <laughs> even harder. Look at how hard I can cry. Maybe now, now we cry on a stage in front of everyone. <laughs> we make a whole show of it. Okay, I'll do it right here, right now on Celestial Cafe. Wait, no, I'll do that on July twenty second on Celestial Cafe. But truly, we're already deep in the solar sauce simply because it's summer and it's beautiful. But now big solar burst comes out of Leo season, confidence, um, standing up for ourselves, being magnetic and, and encouraging that magnetism to uh, charm others, charm yourself even. And uh, I don't know, Leo season's great. We, we all love Leos here. Right. So, uh, and also on the same day, very interesting, late Venus goes retrograde in Leo. So the same day that Leo season starts, Venus has to go take a nap in Leo. Uh, so Leo's and Venus is already out for the count. Uh, but like I said, there's a very interesting adventure that Venus is going to be going on, which I'm going to talk about a little later, uh, actually on the next new moon that happens in August. But how on a how long is Venus in retrograde? Because so one of the things I've noticed is when I look up like astrological information mm -hmm. a lot of things will say the start of transits but never say how long things are so like i know mercury is in retrograde usually like three months three three weeks oh my god three months that would be awful oh, three weeks oh my god <laughs> um but, but like but i'm not familiar with like how long venus is in retrograde and so how long a lot of other transits Oh my god, Panther, oh. you rock. I made Thank a you. retrograde post on my blog. If oh. you guys are interested, it's all the retrogrades for 2023. It's feralwoodfarm.com slash retrograde2023. And Venus retrograde, the pre-shadow actually begins June 19th. And then the actual retrograde starts July 22nd and goes till September 3rd. And then the post-shadow ends October 7th. So this is a doozy. It's a long one. Dude, wow. it's, it's literally, literally it could be longer. I'm happy. <laughs> I got all this information <laughs> from oh all god. of that. 
the, uh, for the rest of this year. That's crazy. You, Thank sleep. you. I did Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is so helpful. Yeah, like this. It's in retrograde for a while. That's the answer. I, I don't remember any of the numbers, but uh, that it's it's quite it's quite a retrograde. And do some numbers and just blank. <laughs> Beginning of September. That's all we need. The, for, for, at the end of summer, it'd probably be an easier way to remember cool. it. That is a, <laughs> an excellent way for my brain to remember it. I will. I will now. Uh, but so. Something very interesting about Venus retrograde, this one in particular, is that it begins retrograde in Leo and ends retrograde in Leo. So it never actually makes it out of the sign. The last time this happened was in 1772, which is right around. That's very when Columbus significant... sailed the ocean blue. Yeah, he did. I'm just kidding. And, and... <laughs> I mean, fuck that guy, though. <laughs> what? In 1772, Columbus sailed the ocean Wait, no, blue. That... Didn't you hear that rhyme before? It, it's not he, 70s. I know. It's, <laughs> I'm really kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all I have is happened. a pun. That's not even a. Just continue. Ignore me. <laughs> I need a nap. I, okay. <laughs> I, we I, all do. Yeah, we're we're hitting that point. I think. I. I I just feel like you know revolutions on our tails. I don't know. That's all. I I think I think. Maybe this will light some fires under individuals, just like it did so, so long ago. Um, but yeah, like what I wrote for like Venus going retrograde in Leo, it's like rest so you can fight, right? And and it feels like like whenever Venus goes retrograde, I just always feel like it's like a trust fall. Like it's just like, am I going to like collide with Venus and just sort of let um, all like these Venusian val- values, such as like unconditional love and and fighting for my my peace and um, living aesthetically and pleasantly, am, am I going to just allow myself to fall into these opportunities and uh, uh, like allow myself to collide with them as they appear, or am I going to be scraping? begging for Venusian pleasures and it's like I feel like I'm always scraping and begging for them (laughs) that's just just my life that's the life as a a patron of Aphrodite we're just like please uh, please ma'am you think it it would come easier but it doesn't (laughs) (laughs) like you think my Taurus moon would mean and like my Libra rising that's lots of Venus energy you do have a lot of Venus but no it does not maybe that means that it was within you all along and it was never external I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can think more about that on July 22nd, I think. Uh, <laughs> save, save those brain cells for then. Um, and then a day later, more retrograde partying. Let's go. We got July 23rd. Chiron goes retrograde in Aries, which is a nice, thick five-month transit. Uh, and honestly, whenever Chiron goes retrograde, so for those who may or may not know, Chiron is the asteroid of what we say colloquially, the unhealable wound. Uh, it's that part of us that we just can't seem to figure out, you know? And and we just always have troubles in this area. And it, it, it causes of just a bit of a bigger blockage than maybe other malefics in our chart, right? And when I see Chiron go retrograde, and especially in Aries, like that fiery retrograde, I feel it. Uh, the first thing I thought of, I mean, for Chiron fire, I think of phoenixes, right? I think about like cauterizing the root wound, becoming reborn. Um, but this is also a really good time to be like, okay, the things that won't aren't working for you at that point are going to get especially painful. So you're going to be getting a lot of direct answers to your healing and how well it's going for you during this time, I feel. Uh, especially especially for fire signs, especially for Aries individuals. Uh, like, I don't know. That's what I, that's, that's what I wrote down here. Can't wait. <laughs> Woo-hoo. It's going to be fun. Tis I, the season. Okay. I actually it's, it's have... I have Chiron retrograde in my chart. Um, it is the only mm-hmm. retrograde in my chart. It is in the eighth house of death and taxes and sex, which mm-hmm. explains mm-hmm. a lot about my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chiron retrograde yeah. is not fun. It is probably yeah. the least fun retrograde in my opinion. <laughs> it's a tough um, one. Like I, I can't lie. That's the, it, It's extra slippery there, and it's extra... Uh, I don't know, like... Especially if you have it like um, natally, it's just like 
you touch the stove again, you touch the stove again, and like the scars are building, and it's like, yeah, it it it's that's a tough one, I feel. <laughs> July 28th, we got Mercury entering Virgo. So uh, Mercury says, uh, uh, peace out to Leo after that very exciting moment in, uh, in July 10th. There we go. That's the date. Uh, and then it enters Virgo. Uh, and I don't know why. I wrote this down in my notes. I was like, I don't know. This feels like kind of like a big deal. Just like looking at the chart, it was mostly just a vibe check on my part. Uh, I don't know. I like every Mercury transit and and shift. I I feel like this is a really important time to say what you mean, say what's best for you, speak it out loud. Especially because Mars, like I said, is in Virgo. Like, and, and there's like a lot of tension that's just happening with Mars kind of being shut up in Virgo in some ways. Um, and then Mercury enters Virgo, and suddenly this built up passion and energy is given a voice in like the same realm. And so, like, I feel like the magic of words is just so important during this this end of July moment. Uh, and and but then we are entering August, and this is a very interesting time of the year, in my opinion, because not only are we in retrograde season full force. But we also enter super moon season. Uh, and so August 1st, from the lunation with the new moon on the 17th with the nodal shift, halfway through, we hit the full moon. It is a super moon in Aquarius on August 1st. And let me just tell you, this is a witch's dream night to do spell work okay which is open your calendar right now write down august 1st this is a wonderful night for crafting and witching and and spells it, it, it is also a holiday which i will pass the torch over for a second but like this is a great night for layered intricate uh uh in-depth spell work and and maybe llamas energy can help with that right Real quick, Lamas. before we cut into Lamas, I'm going to talk for okay, a second sure. about the Sturgeon Moon, um, oh, yes, which please. goes by a lot of different names. Look up the one that is native to your region. Mine's the Sturgeon Moon, because I'm up on the Great Lakes where the Sturgeon live. Um, but so mm -hmm. this moon is all about abundance. It's about prosperity, the harvest is reaping in, um, adaptability, and kind of just like working with what's around you and truly thriving in life. Like you're not just mm -hmm. you're not just scraping by anymore. Like you're living it up. And I think that works so well with that. We've got the super moon and we've got Lunyasa or Lamas also on that day, which is usually celebrated from August 1st to 2nd in the Northern Hemisphere, February 1st to 2nd in the Southern. But uh, this was named for the god Lu. Um, a commemoration of Lu is the, the meaning of the name Lunasa. And mm -hmm. Lu is the Irish god of craftsmen, warriors, seers, diviners, poets, kings, and justice. So a whole like spiel of things, which actually now that I'm thinking of it, like kind of it, it, it just reminded me of like what you were saying with like the the libra and the aries like access you've got like the justice you've got the warriors you've got like the kings and kind of like mm -hmm. ooh, interesting like little mesh there but lu itself means brightness or light um and this date was celebrated in honor of when he defeated the spirits of tir nanog which i don't know if i said that right mm. i but it's a whole story of mythology check it out if you're interested but so this is one of the cross quarter holidays uh it's one of the four celtic fire festivals the in between uh the equinoxes and the solstices and it's all about bread <laughs> actually this is our first harvest festival no you're bringing in all the good stuff um i just got my first strawberry harvest this week Aww, or today no, um, so which i'm so excited for but as we're moving through more and more is going to be coming in from the gardens and so yeah this is all about like kind of basking in the abundance. Do you have oh anything goodness. to add, Fuchsia?
<laughs> Food and community. <laughs> wow. Well, so that sounds like to me that you got to get your coven and do a whole bunch of spells together on the supermoon. That's what I'm hearing. Uh, <laughs> it's me <I> and Cooper. <laughs> it's my coven. <laughs> I, was, I was muted for that entire thing. No, no, no. You're... Oh, oh. <laughs> <It'll be yes. laughs> oh no. Okay. Um, so... If we're good on Supermoon, where we got all our feelings that we're we're definitely going to talk about the Supermoon more once we get closer to it for our full moon episode, and I'm sure we're going to be feeling the energy, uh, pretty pretty in our face at that point. So we'll have more to say then. Um, but then we take a we honk schnoo. There's a little bit of a break during August until so that was August first. Then we're going to August sixteenth, and I put three alarm emojis next to this one okay so this is a big deal and this begins a new lunation august 16th new moon in leo plus venus retrograde okay so follow me here venus retrograde at some point during this uh, uh new moon becomes combust by the sun and what that means is that it is around the sun's rays in the chart which goes out like a specific amount of degrees uh like astrologically but what that means is that venus whenever any planet is combust it's out of order it it, it is being overtaken by the rays of the sun and is kind of not really working at any of its potential but very shortly after this new moon, Venus retrogrades out of the combustion and evolves into what's called a Venus morning star, a morning star Venus, uh, which is an astrological phenomenon where I, I it's funny, I've been saying this word a lot tonight. It, it, it's very warrior Venusian energy, right? Because we got I feel like Venus energy works in two different layers, right? Where there's one that's like really soft and rose petals. Like, are you the rose or are you the thorns? Right. Um, and so this is this is a very thorny Venusian moment, but empoweringly so, um, where we can stand into like just like it's very affirmative. It's very uh, um, like like this is just such a all new moons are great for this, but like this is especially good for getting some really hard stuck habits out of your system, um, and really learning how to trust your gut, trust your intuition. This is the beginning of a very important lunation, um, and so uh, well we'll I, talk about that another day. But yeah, I yes, have what? never heard of a. Uh, sign or a planet being in combust with us combust, with the sun. Yeah. I've never heard of that. Like Isn't that ever. interesting? Um yeah. so so can you explain like what that particularly like it, it's just if it's too close, if a planet is too close to the sun, the only one that doesn't apply to is the moon. So moons mm -hmm. still work at full volume, even mm -hmm. if it's combust sun. Uh combust by the sun. But like any any planet that's just a little too close, I believe I, I'm so bad at numbers. Um, I don't want to say the wrong number, but there is like a specific mm -hmm. numerical degree value in mm -hmm. uh, uh, relation to the sun. I'll actually find it and post it in the Discord because I do want that information somewhere and I want to remember it. Mm -hmm. um, but once it's in that scope of the sun, it's just it, there's no it, it's burnt out. It's burnt. So, uh, so is it like like when eclipses happen, it's kind of um, usually a bad idea to work with the energy that's happening mm, at that probably. time. So is it is it a bad idea to like work with the energy of Venus during probably. that time? Yeah, not until not mm -hmm. until it's fully out of combust. And mm -hmm. trust me, when it's when it's full morning star Venus, there is a lot of energy to work with. Um, okay. And and but but maybe wait until we get out of that degree. Mm -hmm. uh, like happy place mm -hmm. <laughs> at least happy for the sun not happy for the planet um mm -hmm. but then okay so it's, it's a very exciting time and yeah combusts are very interesting uh to think about it kind of makes sense because it works the same way like you said in eclipses right um mm -hmm. but then we get another honk shnu, nice calm just you know transits transits are happening right but then the next one is leo season coming to an end sun entering virgo on august 23rd um 
I don't know. It's opposite Saturn. Uh, I feel like this is a really good time to to sweat the small stuff, uh, <laughs> like and 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 face life with some scrutiny and and lean deeper into your studies. I don't know this. The, the, you know, now I'm saying all this out loud. There's a lot of Virgo energy that's happening this summer, um, just in general, right? Like I feel like there's just like a lot of very studious and focused and uh tending to the weeds of the garden energy right i think but that like, is literally the day my classes start for the fall semester really? <laughs> virgo season that is a beautiful time to start going back to school <laughs> however however the same day mercury goes retrograde in virgo am i correct with that did i get that date right i'm worried now because i wrote this last second <laughs> Mercury goes retrograde August 23rd through September okay, 15th. Right. Pre-shadow okay. begins on the 3rd and post-shadow ends on September 30th, which is my birthday. Hey! Okay, there we go. Nice birthday present from the sky. I love that. <laughs> Give me my Mercury back. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, we are just faced. We had one of these very recently. Another long Mercury retrograde in a Mercurial planet. It just sucks, man. Like, it just, we can't, us Mercurials just can't get a freaking break. So, I don't know. Back up your files. Be picky with who you talk to. Expect the unexpected. You know, classic Mercury retrograde BS. Like, it, it's Mercury's just not happy, right? Like, he, he's been having a hard time all summer. So they got to, they, 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 I don't know. They're, they're chilling. <laughs> they, they need some alone time, I think, after all of this. But, uh, then on the 27th, Mars enters Libra. Mars is not happy there. So I don't know. Mars wants to yell and scream, just like in Virgo, you know? Like, I, I feel like Mars has been getting really shut up lately. But, you know, Libra is very righteous and very just and kind of keeps Mars in check for better or for worse. Good time to think about conflict, how you engage with it, how how that's manifesting for you at that time. So late, late, late August, maybe see if there's any tempers flaring or, uh, you know, uh, feelings that maybe aren't adding up. Might be Mars' fault. Typical. Uh and then the day after, another retrograde. Uranus is going retrograde and, and Taurus, I don't know, dismantling the comfort zone. Erratic changes, right? And, and our foundations, right? <sighs> Shout out to fixed signs. You guys are getting really owned this summer, but we're all in this together, okay? Because don't worry, August 30th. Listen, y'all. Not It's not just a super moon in Pisces. Nah, -uh, don't, don't get it twisted. It's a super blue moon in Pisces, okay? So jot that down. It is a beautiful... I wrote down, wow, in my text. I was like, what <laughs> Just <the>? wow. <laughs> wow, that's cool. It's God, this is such a good moon for healing, okay? This is... It's a good moon for standing out in the backyard crooning. Oh, blue my God. Moon. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 I, I wrote down, so... I don't know. Once again, this moon is conjunct with Saturn retrograde. So I was like really thinking like how what's up here? Like what what kind of magic can we do on the super blue moon? And I came up with ancestral karma, ancestral pains. Uh, Saturn's very old, very ancient, right? Very wise. And I think that this is a wonderful time to tap into our our parental wounds um i also want to say that this is a moon for the cats it's a very cat-like moon uh so uh shout out to all the neckos on august 30th and i don't know it's very cool very cool moon moisturize okay we don't want to be chapped on on the super blue moon that'd be embarrassing yeah so, for those of you guys who don't know what a blue moon is a blue oh. moon is when there is a second full moon in the same month so we yes. had our first day of august where we were blessed with that blue moon the sturgeon moon also on lunasa and now we're also ending this month with uh mm. another blue moon which is why this one doesn't get a traditional full moon name because it's an additional moon it is just known as a blue moon because it's once in a blue moon. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I also want to say um, that on the note of this moon is good for ancestral 
pain and healing and all that. Um, even though this is a year, a, a season at a glance for summer, this is the end of summer that we're reaching. And in fall, we start to think about ancestral work with the coming up of uh, Samhain and everything. So a lot of ancestral um, work starts to get done at this time. So that's something you might want to think about starting with this super blue moon at the end of August. Mm, that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's true. At this point, summer's coming to a close and we're starting to dip our toes into more autumnal mindsets, at least for us in the Northern Hemisphere, right? Where we're starting to think about things like tidying up for the winter. And uh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, getting some last solar blessings with your ancestors and, and really bathing in the light of the sun uh, with with your spirit guides might just be the thing to do on a super blue moon. But yeah, use some chapstick. It's going to be really cold, uh, just energetically and internally. Um, so then that leads us into September, but it's worth mentioning that uh, we're actually going to be doing the fall uh, year at a glance, fall at a glance. Wow. That was a lot of different time periods there. Uh, fall at a glance on September 4th, which is still technically summer. Um, but listen, I just gave a whole bunch of information to you guys. I think I'm going to withhold some of the September information for our autumnal ex- episode. Okay, That will be uh, nice and fresh for you guys. Yes. Yeah. But but there there is still some more summer magic uh, right at the end. Uh, so... I don't know if you'll you'll get more of that as we inch closer to that time period. Um, but that's really all I got. And I guess like just in conclusion on my end, it's we got a lot of stuff to think about. Uh, I feel like that this is a very um, I, I use this term earlier, a very bottlenecked moment astrologically where we're really going to be pushed into maybe shapes that we're not ready for or that we do, that that we may or may not want. And it's really important that we discern and speak aloud what we desire. There's there's a lot of mercurial energy this summer that d- is going to be fluctuating in various different spaces, right? Like That does not make sense to me. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, it was actually funny because Good I was word. talking I was talking to someone yesterday um, about how um, um, it was Anita and she was like, I feel like you need to do a lot of work with Mercury. And I'm like, I have such a bad relationship with Mercury. I have, I am not mercurial. I have no like Gemini in my chart whatsoever. And, Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, how do I start? And then I'm looking at all of this for the summer and the, wild ride mercury is going on and i'm like mm-hmm. maybe this isn't the best time to start <laughs> um, <I was laughs> that like, means I feel it like is got, the right time right <laughs> i feel like i got my work cut out for me if i'm starting now <laughs> the wind's coming you can either try to roll with it or you can fight mm-hmm. against it <laughs> And, I mean, and Mercury's struggling itself this summer so um it is doesn't it want is. to struggle with me <laughs> Yeah, Mercury doesn't go direct to like mid September. It's also worth mentioning that Venus goes direct early September on the third, um, and that, like I said, Venus is gonna be empowered after this this retrograde combustion transit. Like it, it it's. <sighs> I don't know. They're, they're, I, I feel like a uh, shout out to anyone who has a lot of Venus placements. You're going to be on quite the ride late summer. Um, to all my mercurials and to all my fixed signs who have been on just a wild ride for the past few years now. Um, it, it, it's still kind of tough <laughs> in your, in your corner. But, um, I, I really think that if played correctly, if we can wisen up and, and fall, trust fall into the stars and into the astrology that's coming up, uh, I think that there's a lot of surrendering at our heels. I think that there's a lot of, like I said, truth speaking. If there's one thing I want you guys to take away from this as a whole, really use this summer to fine tune you speaking your truth. Um, not saying yes when you mean no uh, is a great place to start and vice versa, right? Like, and, and you know, it, 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 even if it's hard to hear, even if it's hard to say, you got to speak the truth, right? I think that's going to cause the path of least resistance as you go up and down uh, the Celeste's wild ride for this summer. But, uh, and, and you're going to be coming face to face with a lot of 
the things you've been working on for the the past while. There's various different cycles beginning and ending throughout the summer. Um, I mean, like the the Venus cycle is one that's starting and um, Chiron going retrograde for me, at least because I work with Chiron a lot is a very important five month transit that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. So and, and who knows, maybe that didn't mean anything to you, but you're like really taken by the Mars entering Libra in late August, like take what you feel is relevant also use your own chart guide yourself see see what's going on and and seeing see what mirrors and what interacts with each other as the summer goes on this is this is how you get really in touch with this inner world of astrology you know rather than me just spouting all this at you bring it back to your <laughs> own chart because who knows maybe you're gonna have a wonderful time during this upcoming mercury retrograde in august and it's because yeah. of this this and this placement you got you know but you know I I I, I I i see archetypes and i say them you know what i mean <laughs> so i'm curious what like particular transits all of you are looking forward to or dreading because I'm not looking for the forward to the Chiron retrograde. I'm going to put that out. Like my life is a Chiron retrograde. I don't need more of it. Uh, <laughs> you might be so, at home then. So, Maybe everyone's going to be on your level and you're going to be able to be like, I, I don't think I've ever been conscious of a Chiron retrograde um, before, like since I've gotten into astrology. So this will be interesting to at least take notes for and journal and stuff. But I am looking forward to the super moon at the beginning of August, the super moon in Aquarius, particularly in your notes you have, it's a great moon for long intricate layered spells and here's the thing august 2nd i am going back home for my for the first time since 2017 i'm visiting wow. home and i am working on a very layered spell to line up a job to line like to um i want to buy my childhood wow. home to like to like work all of that um so so that that is happening the day before i fly back home is wow. really exciting um so so i i have been like putting together like notes on what i want to do for a spell i haven't done anything but so so looking at that and that is literally the day before i go back home wow. is okay. um is looks pretty fortuitous so i'm I looking forward so to too. that transit hmm. um, yeah, that, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to both of the super moons. I'm a lunar witch. So anytime I got some nice moon magic I can work with, I'm, I'm rubbing my hands yeah. together like a little villain, a uh, mm -hmm. little lunar villain. Um, I'm mm -hmm. also excited. I, I'm As you can tell, I'm kind of eager to see how this Venus retrograde plays out and... Um, and Leo, uh, I'm very curious. I, I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I have to see what A happens Gemini next. Curious, hmm. intrigued. <laughs> yes, indeed, I am. And uh, I, I think those are the big two. Um, Mercury retrogrades. I just roll over and pretend that I'm not. Mo it's like the T Rex. Like if it if it doesn't move, it, it won't see me. Uh, so I guess we'll see how that goes. And um, I. I I don't know. I, I think just looking at this, those are those are the big ones that I think stand out to me and mean something to me, right? Mm -hmm. What about you, Panthera? I I just love summer so much. It's hard I for me too. to be like I'm just excited about one thing. I will say that the the super moon on Lunasa is a a big one for me. Um, I've got some ideas uh, that I might start on the solstice and work up to there. I think that would be fantastic to have them kind of like accumulate or like reach their peak um, on that day, and then maybe even work them on the back end towards the other blue moon at the end of the month. I I just think that this is such like a Oh, it's such a magical time of year for me. I just love I everything so about summer and just uh, I I'm, I have a lot of stuff planned to work with my garden. I need to do like um, my yard oh. protections again and things like that. So it's I'm very excited. And of course, oh. uh, the thing I just love to do the most is just worship, worship the sun. I like me a nice pool, uh. a good drink and a nice little lawn chair that I can oh. sit on for some time. So me and Bucka Boo, my doggie. 
<laughs> we will be laying out in the sun a lot this summer. So Me I've got too. my little inflatable pool and that is how we will be <laughs> celebrating <Yeah>. magically. <laughs> Me and Buck will also be hanging out a lot this summer. Yeah, next week pool. come over. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so funny because I am so not a winter per- uh, not a summer person. I am a winter person. So I'm like you make it sound so good, but I know I, summer will actually hit and I'll be like, oh my God, I hate this. I love summer. I'm Just miserable. I'm already preemptively sad that summer is so short. Like, <laughs> and I'm already pre depressed for no, no. See, it's, it's the same size as everything time. else. Like, <laughs> it, could, it could be shorter. It could be oh, shorter. No, up in Ohio, I'm in Northeast Ohio. Ours is pretty short. So my last frost mm-hmm. date is May 31st. Um, even yeah. this past week has been yeah. cold. It's been like six upper 60s. It's been it, chilly. It's been beautiful, I don't want to right? wear sweatpants. I it's want been the beautiful. skin bare. Okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, the knees need to be free and the boobies need to be free. It's summertime oh and that's how wow. I like it. It's, it's been in the titties 60s. Out. It's been it. perfect. I love it. I love, I love this weather. What are you talking about sweatpants? It's been beautiful. I love it. For those listening, uh, let us know what you're vibing with with everything I just listed. Um, even if it's about like the the Sabbaths in and of themselves. I'm I'm always excited for Litha. Litha's going to be a great day as usual for me. Very self-indulgent day for me where I just sit in the sun if possible and uh, just soak up all the rays and read a bunch of tarot cards for me and my loved ones. That's that's usually my Litha r- ritual. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I, I listed a whole bunch of transits, a whole lot of things happening in the sky. Let me know if there's any magical serendipities that are happening between your chart and the sky and how you think it's going to interact with you. It could be a bit of a astrology study session even with yourself with all the shit I just listed. So, uh, yeah, please let us know. I, so, uh, I'm very curious. I have, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so we have... Our first book club meeting coming up um, on the 30th, on the 30th, yes. Friday um, the 30th. So, so at that point, the um, there was a Virgo transit that's happening around then, right? That's Neptune uh, going retrograde in Pisces. Uh, it's June 30th. So uh, what is it? There was something so, about Virgo being studious and everything. No, that was that was August. Never mind. Yeah, wow. yeah, and, and that's ju- that's early July, July tenth. Right. We got Mars entering Virgo, and uh, so, so yeah. So how how are things looking for our book club? Hmm. Well, you guys are definitely going to be magical. You guys are definitely going to go far, far away and do some heady little spells with everyone. Uh, and yeah, for those listening, please stop by the book club meetings. It's gonna be fun this is our first time doing it so i hope everyone <laughs> likes shit uh and uh yeah it's gonna be run by fuchsia and panthera and i think they're planning on doing a spell from psychic witch so everyone should show up despite neptune being retrograde I, I, in some ways i think that's better so, for some sorts of magic right just like was, the, the limits are off anything's yeah. possible i was actually when you were talking about um neptune and retrograde and you were like it's not like a happy transit and like like you'll want to be off in the clouds but but like you need to stay grounded and everything i i am sitting there like this sounds great for me because i'm yeah. usually way too grounded i have too much earth so i'm like this sounds this sounds good for me <laughs> um, but yeah. we'll see we'll see how it plays out um yeah, you don't have any pisces so it might not even interact with you at all uh but I wish I did. It'll, maybe it'll rub off on you a little bit. Maybe mm. you can tap into it yeah. uh, as you're doing some psychic witch crafting, mm. uh, which would be cool. Um, but that's that's really it from me. Thanks for listening. Uh, and I hope that this gave anyone listening some ammo to confront the summer uh, prepared, uh, astrologically knowledged up and um, ready to conquer, seize all of the solar days that are up, up ahead. Uh, overall, I think it's going to be a very interesting, a very productive, and a very throat magic summer. Uh, for, for we know all. how much we love throat magic here at <laughs> <laughs> <Stoke Cafe. laughs> So much throat magic. 
<laughs> practice all the time. So, uh, <laughs> so it, it's we're we're we're, we're, we're we'll practice. It's your turn. We're passing the torch to the viewers. Uh, so. <laughs> Practice Missed safe there. throat magic. <laughs> yeah. Tread carefully, please. Uh, but yeah, that's it from me. Um, does anyone else have anything that they'd like to share uh, or questions, comments, concerns about this upcoming summer in general? Any vacations? Any feelings? Any vibes? I, I mean, I talked about my trip home, so yes, uh, yes. That's, that, that's it. I'm excited for that, but and hopefully it will it will actually put things into motion that I have been planning on and working out for a couple years now. So, so mm -hmm. I'm, um, this is like the step I need to see if everything will fall into place. And, um, at this point it is up to the universe, which is not the most kind to me. Um, but, but maybe this time it will decide to be because I feel like this is right. Um, so <laughs> So we'll see, but I, I am excited for that. Um, but that's all I've got going on for my summer mm -hmm. um, and putting a lot of work into content creation uh, because I don't Me have too. a summer job. So so content creation and working out. <gasps> Woo! Yeah, I just I, I am on day 10 of my stretching routine. Ooh. Oh, my I God. Went for, I'm so flexible. I went for a bike ride today, um, and also <laughs> I had to fix a flat tire that my bike mysteriously got over the winter, somehow sitting on its bike rack, and in the process of fixing it, uh, 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 oh God, Ginny came and started playing with the tire and spinning it, so I'm like... I know why I got a flat tire over the winter now. Oh, <laughs> so. I was gonna say, that's not so mysterious. I, I was like, yeah, I think yeah. I cracked the code. Yeah, uh. yeah. I, th I, think I, I think I figured it out. Um, but I went for I went for a bike ride today. I literally right before the podcast found my running headphones. So hey. um, so I'm excited to start my running routine again because I love running. I love running so much. Cool. Um, I know cool. I'm a freak, but um, but um, I don't think so. I think I'm, running's I'm excited. Cool. I'm excited for that and just like going gung-ho on content creation cool um cool. and and what? restocking my etsy shop oh yes again yes because again. <laughs> i i sold out immediately after restocking things wow. I, I don't know why but nice. thank you oh <laughs> so, yeah what about you panther what what's what's in store for your summer I've got a what do you bunch do? of little mini trips which is interesting mm. um so i'm going to visit my friends a couple times i'm visiting my family at the end of this month i'm visiting my sister in florida um at the end of september so oh i kind of got a lot of like a little like long week weekend trips planned but mostly mm. i just I need, i'm excited to get active again um i've been horseback riding which has been awesome and i'm excited for that to continue through this summer um and i'm just i, I can't wait to just lean more into the, my garden and just enjoy the sun like i'm just gonna gonna chill and hang out outside as much as i physically can <laughs> that's that's my goal too i definitely want some sun i want to bathe in the solar rays uh i don't have anything huge planned this summer we were gonna go to a yoga retreat but screw that uh i just want to stay home uh i'm <laughs> that sounds really expansive and spiritually awakening for me but nah i'm just gonna lay in my yard instead i think uh and and, and wave to the clouds and uh i don't know i i uh I, I feel like it's going to be an, a, a active for me too. Very active summer coming up, um, and I'm already getting a, a a head start because I'm stretching, and now I can touch my toes and stuff. So uh, we're 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 getting there, and uh, that's it for me. I think. Oh, and it's Cooper's birthday. Oh my God! Actually, huge news. Uh, Cooper's birthday is on Saturday, the seventeenth. So. By the time this releases, he will be four years old. Uh, huge. Actually, that's spring news. Oh, my God. I'm Make sure you guys join the Discord to wish Cooper a happy birthday. It's very, very he'll important. Appreciate it. <laughs> it is. It is. He'll, he'll get back to you after he has two birthday burgers. Because he's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's it for this episode, right? Oh, I think so. Unless. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds good, I guess. Um check us out elsewhere shady if you want, if you want to do the 
send us. <laughs> and check us out if you care. But, yeah, you know, also, you can find yeah. more information about Celestial Cafe <laughs> at our website at celestialcafe.org. We've got all of our social media. We'd love to have you in the Discord. We just added a new Patreon section in there. Um, and you can join us on the Patreon for little notes and updates. I think Panthera just did a tarot reading up there for you. And we've got the book club, as you've probably heard at least once or twice per episode, every episode for the last four <laughs> We're episodes. We're so excited, okay? Um, you can't do you play like us. how we... I really tried to just, like, subtly put it in there at the end, and it's it was not subtle, subtle at all. Very subtle, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I guess we will catch you in the next episode. We still have to do our meeting here soon and figure out our next lineup of episodes, but um, as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts on what you'd like to hear us cover, what you've been enjoying so far. We've been trying a lot of different uh, content styles out, or not really content styles so much as just conversation topics out. So, if there have been specific areas that you've enjoyed hearing us talk about or if there's something we haven't touched on that you'd like to hear us touch on in the future um let us know you can do that uh on any of the social media you can email us uh hit us up on patreon we do give first priority to our patrons of course um for those suggestions and um yeah i guess we'll keep you posted uh and you can always check the celestial cafe website for uh the next episode um listed up front right there for you and i guess that's it so we will see you in the next episode i hope you'll have a good rest of june maybe better than my june <laughs> i hope so hopefully so. better than my june <laughs> um, actually i i did want to say one last thing um i kind of was left with a $1,400 vet bill for avocado, so um, I have a coffee where I'm collecting funds to help cover that if anyone wants to help out or buying from my Etsy shop once I restock. Um, but hopefully things will get better from here on out. So, yeah. Yes. Alright. Well, I hope you all have a good rest of June. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye, everybody! Bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!